I'm Dan. And I'm Jacob. And this week, we're starting a whole new series about Dan. That's me. Uh, not this Dan, another Dan, from the Bible. You might know him better as Daniel or Belshazzar. He had a close encounter with some lions. Yeah, he did. And while we may share the same first name, I wouldn't mind sharing a couple of his uh, skills and talents as well. Like understanding others better or maybe some wisdom? Come on, man. I'm just kidding. Let's watch this God story to learn a little bit more about Daniel. So Daniel, Hazariah, Azariah, and Mishael. Nope. Hi kids, my name is Jen. It's so exciting to be with you today. I want to tell you about a story about a time when my niece and my nephew showed that they were really being obedient to their parents even when their parents weren't watching. Have you guys gotten a report card recently? I remember last summer when I got to read my niece and nephew's report cards from school and it was so fun to read how they were being nice and sharing and helping their friends in class. Even though we weren't there to kind of help them do that, they were just doing what they knew what they should do, which was so cool. That story reminds me of today's big idea. God loves our faith in action. God loves to see his kids living out their faith in real life. And there's a story that reminds me of that that we're going to get to today. But first, I want to introduce you to our new series that we're starting today. This series is about a guy in the Old Testament. That's the part of the Bible before Jesus came to earth. And this guy's name is Daniel. Daniel was a Jewish guy who loved God's ways and was faithful to God. The Jews, remember God's special family, were living in Jerusalem and had just been defeated by the Babylonians. Some of the young, smart Jewish men were taken to Babylon to serve the king. His name was King Nebuchadnezzar. Along with Daniel, there were three other young men taken to Babylon. Their names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. All four men had their names changed to Babylonian names. Daniel was Belteshazzar, and Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now you might know them as Rack, Shack, and Benny. I know that I do. Anyway, for now, we'll stick with calling them Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. They were taken to Babylon to be trained for three years before they could serve in the king's court. The king had given these men and the others training to serve with him the best food and wine in all of the court. But Daniel knew that eating the king's food wasn't best for him. See, the king's food is what Jewish people would have called unclean, and Daniel didn't want to do that. He wanted to follow God's way. So he asked one of the officials hmm. permission to not eat the king's food. Now, the official was afraid of what the king would say, so he told Daniel he couldn't do it. So Daniel Daniel spoke to one of the guards. Daniel said, let's read from the Bible together. Daniel said to him, please test us for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and give us only water to drink. Then compare us with the young men who eat the king's food. See how we look. After that, do what you want to. So the guard agreed. He tested them for 10 days. After the 10 days, Daniel and his friends looked healthy and well-fed. In fact, they looked better than any of the young men who ate the king's food. So the guard didn't require them to eat the king's special food. He didn't require them to drink the king's wine either. He gave them vegetables instead. So Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael were faithful to God's ways, and they felt healthy and good. And God was pleased with the way that they put their faith into action. He gave these men special knowledge and understanding. They could understand and know all kinds of things, and he gave Daniel the ability to understand visions and dreams. After three years of training, they were brought to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king thought that Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael were fine men and some of the best that served in his court. The king asked them for advice that required wisdom and understanding, and the king was always pleased with what they had to say. Other men in the court claimed to get knowledge by using magic, but Daniel and his friends' answers were usually the better ones, and they got their knowledge from God. Sometimes being faithful to God may not look like huge, big things. Sometimes it might be simple, everyday actions. When we are faithful to God in the little things, He knows He can trust us with the bigger stuff too. And that's one of the many reasons why God loves our faith in action. He can see that one practical way we can show our love is to be faithful in what He's asked of us. Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael knew this and they lived it. We can live out our faith in action too by following Jesus' example of what it means to live God's way at home, at school, and with our families. Well, friends, it was really great to be with you today. I will see you next time. Quickly, turn to the person next to you 
and answer the following questions. Question time! Why did the young men ask to have only vegetables to eat and water to drink? Do you think it was difficult or easy for them to show their faith in God? Would it be difficult or easy for you? Why? the key verse before all the paint spills? Say it with me. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Get ready. Three, two, one, go! Daniel and his friends took a huge risk when they asked to stick to their Jewish dietary restrictions. Yeah. But when you're serious about your faith, sometimes it requires being bold and taking risks. Yeah, and it was a great example of people putting their faith into action. Well, most of you know Michaela. Sometimes she comes on to share God stories with us. This time we asked her to share on how she lives out her faith. Let's watch this. I'm Michaela, I'm a student. I love to travel, I play a few instruments, and I've been electrocuted twice. Growing up, I always felt that I was a little different. I had different hobbies and activities that I did that my friends didn't necessarily do. Um, and sometimes it made me feel a little different, uh, but other times it made me feel like I was special in a way because I was doing things that none of my friends did. So I'm a huge animal lover, and I follow a bunch of pages on the internet. A lot of those pages show these farmed animals really happy and living wonderful lives. But a lot of the times, they show these farmed animals living in a place called factory farms. And some of these factory farms are dirty and filled with disease, and these animals live in really small places. Because there is abuse on some of these factory farms, and I don't know whether the meat that I'm eating comes from some of these farms, I just decided to cut meat out of my life and I became vegetarian. Then about eight months ago, I decided to fully go vegan, which means that I don't eat any animal products, including fish, milk, ice cream, butter, or eggs. This was a whole new journey that I started on. Originally, it was really hard to decide what I was gonna eat, where I was gonna get my food, what groceries I was gonna buy, because I didn't really know what I was supposed to eat and what I couldn't eat. But through a lot of research and talking to a dietitian, I was able to find out that it was a lot easier than what I thought. So I go to school for agriculture because it's something that I'm really passionate about. But there are a lot of students who come from farms who see me as someone who's trying to take away their business. I don't want to take away their business. In fact, I want to encourage family farms. But people have an idea of what vegans are. And those perceived notions of who I am can really frustrate me. People think I'm often rude or I'm going to be in their face about the choices that I make. But I don't want to do that. I just want to have a conversation with people and say, this is the decision I made, and this is why I did so. Sometimes it feels as though I'm on the outside looking in on the group because of the choices that I made. 
A lot of the times it can feel hard that I can't always join the club, that I can't always do things. But this was something that I felt convicted of by God. I had to do this and so I did it. And so when times get tough, I always turn to him and say, God, I'm gonna rely on you because this is something that I want to do and I know that this is something that you want me to do. We all have decisions that we need to make in our life. For me, it was going vegan. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go vegan or vegetarian, but the decisions that you make in your life need to make you happy and bring you closer to God. Even though this journey started out really hard and still kind of is at times, it's a journey that I've had to go through that has made me stronger and closer to God. I feel happier and I have a better relationship with food. No longer do I feel as though I'm the one on the outside looking in, but now I feel as though I'm part of a community and I'm able to talk to people. I'm able to have these open conversations and I feel as though I am doing what God has always wanted me to do. Michaela, what an amazing way to stand for what she believes in. Absolutely, and like she said, she doesn't expect everyone to live the same way that she does, but she was convicted that a vegan lifestyle would honor God. We have choices for the specifics in our life, but at the end of the day, we all have one goal in mind, and that's to become more and more like Jesus. And the way to do that is to live out our faith, just like what we've seen with Daniel and with Michaela. Now, interestingly enough, Jacob, you are also a vegan. Yeah. And I'm not. But as Christ followers, we can learn to respect each other and celebrate each other's differences. Absolutely. Let's break into small groups now and see what this looks like in our lives. 